Hey there, welcome to today's lesson on the metric system. Today we are going to learn how to convert between metric units and your question of the day, which you should pause to answer, is how many inches are in a foot, how many seconds are in a minute, and how many fluid ounces are in a gallon? All right, there are 12 inches in a foot, 60 seconds in a minute, and 128 fluid ounces in a gallon. How many ounces are in a gallon? One U.S. gallon is 128 U.S. fluid ounces. There we go, 128. So that is a lot. And notice how none of those are the same number. Um, this is why the customary system or the American system of measurement is not great for science. It's because it's, it's every single conversion is different. And uh, the metric system, that's not the case. It's much easier to convert between units and every country in the world except for America and two others use the metric system. So when it comes to us sharing our ideas with other scientists and sharing out lab reports, um, it's a really great idea that we are all using the same measurement system. So we've decided that the metric system is the science measurement system. So the metric system is sometimes called the SI system. That stands for something in French. I don't remember. Uh, it's just a system of weights and measures. And there are some standard units that go along with that. And those are going to measure um, some basic things. So distance is always measured in meters, represented by a lowercase m. Volumes base unit is liters, represented by a capital L. Mass in grams, represented by a lowercase g. Time is in seconds. And then the rest of these might be new. So temperature is measured in Kelvin, not Celsius, but it is a cousin to Celsius. So it's really not that difficult. Uh, the amount of substance I'll teach you later, that's called a mole, which we abbreviate M-O-L. That's specific to chemistry. And I have already told you, I think that chemists are lazy. They've abbreviated the word M-O-L-E to M-O-L. Uh, M was already taken by meter. M-O is an element on the periodic table, so that was already taken. So they were left with M-O-L. At that rate, just write the E. Um, <laughs> then we have candelas, which measure light intensity, and amperes, or amps, that measure electrical current. Now, these are the base units. There are plenty of other units. Um that have prefixes on the front of them, which are variations of these units. So for instance, a milliliter is a really tiny liter. <laughs> and uh, a kilogram is a big gram. It's lots of grams bundled together. And then we also have derived units. So if we did meters divided by seconds, that is, um, that's a new unit, meter, meters per second. And then we also have um, joules, which is a unit of energy. That is a base unit. And it is some variation of a mathematical expression of these units put together. Um, so that is how all of the other units work. There's some variation or combination of these base units. Now, relative measurements are things that compare one thing to another. So I am um, heavier than this pen. Doesn't tell you how heavy I am, doesn't tell you how heavy this pen is, but it does tell you that I am bigger than the pen. Um, you may be taller than somebody or shorter than somebody else. Again, doesn't tell you your height, but it tells you kind of how you fit relative to other measurements. Now the metric system is going to use a prefix kind of to assign the relative size. So like I said, milliliter is a small liter, not quite a liter. It is a small chunk of a liter. So the prefix is gonna tell you whether you're measuring something big or something small. And there's lots of different prefixes. There's even prefixes beyond this. So kilo, is represented by a K, which represents a thousand of the base units. So if I had a kilogram, that would be 1,000 grams. A hecto, hectacre is the only place I've ever seen that. That's going to measure 100 acres. It's represented by H. Deca represents 10 of the base units. 
The base unit represents one, so you'd have one liter, one gram, one meter, one candela, one mole, one second, one amp. I think I got them all. <laughs> Deci is a tenth of the base unit. Centi is one one hundredth of the base unit, and milli is one one thousandth of the base unit. All of your um, computer data sizes, like a kilobyte, a megabyte, a terabyte, a gigabyte, those are all metric prefixes, but those are big metric prefixes. And then we have some ones even smaller than this. We have uh, micro, which is 10 to the minus six. We have um, micro nano. We have, I say pico, but everybody else says picometers. I think that's 10 to the minus 12. I don't remember, um, but we have really tiny metric prefixes as well. Um, and not every place value has a metric prefix, but a lot of them do. So the big prefixes are used when the quantity that you're measuring is big or large, and you are going to use small prefixes when you're measuring small stuff. If I was measuring the mass of an element, I would... Uh, an, a chemist on the brain. If I was measuring the mass of an elephant... <laughs> I would not be measuring him in milligrams. I would measure him in kilograms because he's he's going to be big. <laughs> I don't want to measure him. I would measure an ant maybe in milligrams. Um, medicines are measured in milligrams. You wouldn't measure that in kilograms. Kilograms are kind of like pounds. They're pretty big. Now, um, converting metric units. If you wanted to turn grams into kilograms, for instance, your scale or balance maybe measures in grams, but you have a lot of them. So you want to write down, you want to, you know, add up all of those masses and turn them into kilograms. Um, you'd have to convert using a prefix. So the way to remember the prefixes in order is with this silly rhyme. It's not really a rhyme, the silly line. King Henry drinks unusually delicious chocolate milk. When you put this all together, it is going to tell you the units. So king is kilo, Henry is hecto, and you can see the rest here. These are the ones that you're going to use for chemistry. Um, if you go into advanced chemistry and you go beyond this um, course that I'm providing, you will probably use nano and pico and femto, I think. <laughs> um, is it Fento or Femto? Femto. I don't remember. Um, but you will maybe use those tiny prefixes. If you do anything in computers, you may use the big prefixes. But for chemistry, we typically just use the kilo. We use the unit. And then a lot of the times we use milli. We do need to remember the other ones, though, because it's going to help us to convert units. So um, the metric system is based on the place value system. Just like we said, kilo represents 1,000 of the base units. Hecto represents 100 of the base units. And the only difference there is that extra zero on the end. So the metric system is based on the number 10 and the place value system. Now we could go and convert all of our units um, by multiplying and dividing by 10 each time we wanted to turn, for instance, grams into kilograms. But instead of doing that, because it's based in the place value system, we're just going to move the decimal because... Why do it the hard way if we could do it the easy way? <laughs> I'm not a big math brain girl, so I am going to explain it to you as if I was teaching myself and the way I would want to learn it. So the way I want to learn it is as little math as possible. So that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to move the decimal. So we are prompted with a question. How many centimeters are in 1.8 meters? So the first thing we're going to do is list all of our symbols in order. King Henry drinks unusually delicious chocolate milk. If at any time this is going a little too fast, you should pause the video to catch up or you should go to the gear symbol and instead of watching it at normal speed, watch it at 0.75. It'll slow it down a little bit. Don't go to 0.5 and definitely don't go to 0.25 because then I'm going to sound like I am in slow motion. <laughs> All right. Um, so... We have our prefixes listed out or our letters that represent the prefixes, and we need to figure out where we're starting and where we're ending. So because we are starting with meters, which is a base unit, we are going to begin with U for unit. And we want to get to C for centimeters. 
remember each of these letters doesn't just represent King Henry's line. It represents a prefix of your relative metric system measurements. So if you put your pencil on U and jump to C, it is going to take two jumps to get from U to C. We are going to take the decimal in the number 1.8 and we are going to move that two times in the same direction. So we're going to go two times to the right and that is going to give us a new number. Each jump that we make on the King Henry scale is going to make, represent a jump that the decimal makes when we convert our units. Now we can get the decimal behind the eight and then we have to move the decimal again. And I'm sure you can already figure out, but anytime we do these jumps and we have an empty space, we should fill in the empty space with a zero. So with this case, we are going from 1.8 meters and we want to convert that into centimeters. We've moved the decimal two times to the right, and that is going to give us 180 centimeters. So for every 1.8 meters, there are 180 centimeters. You could do the same thing by multiplying by 100. 1.8 times 100 would give you 180. Um, but sometimes it's just not that simple. And sometimes um, I don't want to do the math. And I know that multiplying by 100 is not that difficult. But I also sometimes get confused whether I should multiply or divide. You're going to multiply when you are getting more of the thing. So there's a bunch of centimeters in a meter. So if I'm going to have more centimeters, right, there's more centimeters than there are meters, you are going to multiply. If you are shrinking them, you're going to divide. So if you on the King Henry scale are moving to the right, you multiply. If you're going left, you divide. Again, if you're going to the right, if you're moving your decimal to the right, you're going to wind up making your number bigger, right? Your decimal moving to the right is always going to make your number bigger. And if the number is getting bigger, you're going to multiply. If your decimal is moving to the left, your number is getting smaller and therefore you would divide. So I have some practice for you. I would love for you to write these down and practice them right now. And I'm going to give you the answers. Make sure you paused. All right, here are your answers. Uh, 250 centimeters is going to convert to 2.5 meters because you would have to move the decimal two places to the left. Um, this is the unit I was talking about before in number two, capital J stands for joules. It's a derived unit. It's a combination of some of the other units. And if I wanted to convert that into kilojoules, then I would have to move the decimal one, two, three places to the left, giving me 74.5. Um, capital D is decaliters, representing 10, and lowercase d is deca, and in this case it's meters, so it's decimeters, representing one-tenth. So that is a big difference there. Nobody really uses decaliters. <laughs> um, at least in chemistry, we would just say though that it was 10 liters, um, so this would be 500 liters. But... We need those units that we don't really use, like hecto or deca or even deci. We don't use those very often, but we need them to hold the place in the King Henry scale. At some point, you will get really great at this, especially when we get to the solutions unit. Changing from milliliters to liters happens all the time. So you're going to know immediately just to move three places to the left to convert from milliliters to liters. This is just some good practice. Not a lot of this happens in chemistry, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. So that is all I have for you for today. Uh, if this was tough, I suggest you rewatch the video, do these practice questions again, come back in a few days and test them again. Make sure that you feel confident in it. You can always ask questions in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss tomorrow's lesson and I'll see you there. Bye.